Well, good morning. It is so good to be able to pray together about the things that are weighing heavy on our hearts. My name is Miss Tandy, and um, I'm on staff here with Grace Kids. So we have been learning about how God split the once united kingdom of Israel into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And we learned that in the northern kingdom of Israel, every single king and most of the people chose to worship idols instead of the one true God. And so God allowed the Assyrian army to come and take them away. And there was no longer a northern kingdom of Israel. So today we're going to turn our attention to the southern kingdom of Judah and some of the kings there. And the thing to know about the southern kingdom of Judah is all of the kings are related to King David. He's either their great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather. Well, you get the idea. So they're related to him. And so you wonder, so did these kings, unlike their cousins to the north, did they worship the one true God? Sadly, most of them chose to worship idols and to lead their people into the worship of false gods. But there were some good kings. And if you've been keeping up with our Everyday Five reading, you kids, your parents would have written, uh, read to you about some, two of those kings this week. They were Hezekiah and his great-grandson, Josiah. Now, parents, if you have gotten behind in your reading, you can still download your Everyday Five bookmark and begin reading in uh, 2 Chronicles 29, because you don't want to miss these great stories. They're so exciting, and it's so fun to read about actual kings that do the right thing. But today, I actually want to teach you about King Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. This is a story we often skip over, and we especially don't bother to tell children. But kids, I want you to know this story. Because I know when we hear about how God punishes sin, we could be thinking, oh, I really need to do the right thing, and I'm going to make sure, because otherwise God's going to get angry with me. And then when we sin, we either lie or we hide it. We want to pretend we actually haven't done anything that bad. Because we get, okay, sin is serious, but I don't want God to punish me, and he's probably angry with me. This is why we really need to read all of Scripture. Because this helps us see who God is, what is he like, and what are we to do with our sin. And so we're going to learn about Manasseh. So go ahead and turn to 2 Chronicles 33. Now Hezekiah, as I said, he was a good king. He got rid of the idols in the land, destroyed them, burned them up, repaired the temple, led the people in awesome worship gatherings. And he gets old and dies, and his son Manasseh becomes king. And this is where we'll pick up. So Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. He rebuilt high places that his father Hezekiah had torn down. He reestablished all the altars for the Baals, the false gods. He made Asherah poles, and he bowed down to worship all the stars in the sky, and he served them. He built altars to all the stars in the sky and and put them in both courtyards of the temple. He passed his sons through the fire. He practiced witchcraft, divination, sorcery. He consulted mediums and spiritists. He did a huge amount of evil in the Lord's sight, angering him. So Manasseh caused Judah and all the people of Jerusalem to stray so that they did worse Worse, evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. Awful things happen when we disobey God. In this case, I mean, babies and children were not safe in the kingdom. Things that were wrong were actually declared right. In other places of scripture, we find out he killed many, many innocent people and prophets God sees all the evil that is happening. Would it be right for God just to ignore it? Would he be a good God if he did not punish evil? We find out later in the book of Jeremiah, because of the evil that is done during this time, God is going to allow this southern kingdom of Judah to be conquered by her enemies. But what about Manasseh? What should God do to Manasseh, the one who led the people in all of this sin? 
Well, this is where we're going to pick up the story in verse 10. So the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they didn't listen. So he brought against them the military commanders of the king of Assyria. They captured Manasseh with hooks, and they bound him with bronze shackles, and they took him away to Babylon. When he was in distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and earnestly humbled himself before the God of his ancestors. He prayed to God. Okay, so now, when it's finally really bad, now Manasseh's going to turn to God. I mean, what should God do? Because, I mean, it's only because things are really bad, right? So he prayed to God, and the Lord was receptive to his prayer. He granted his request. He brought him back to Jerusalem, to his kingdom. So Manasseh came to know that the Lord is God. God forgives even Manasseh. This is what we're learning about, right, in this Old Testament. What is God like? When he he doesn't ignore the sin, but he sees it, but he waits. He waits and waits. He doesn't want to punish. He's calling after them. Just as we were singing, he's running after them, running, right? His goodness is running after them, saying, come back to me. Turn from your sin. Turn back to me. And as God is just, he cannot wait to forgive. As soon as he turns, God forgives. That is the heart of our God. When we turn, he forgives us. He does not ignore sin. This is why God the Father sent God the Son. He had to take our punishment. Punishment had to happen. And Jesus took it so that we can be forgiven. We can be called sons and daughters of God. So kids... When you sin, don't hide it. Don't pretend it's not a big deal. We confess our sin to our Father. He is waiting to welcome you back home.